Let's talk about some mortgage broker marketing ideas for beginners. If you're just starting out with marketing, you just got your mortgage license, let's talk about some ideas, some ways that you can get some business popping right now. I'm Nick Carpenter, welcome back to the channel. All right, so the very first thing that you wanna do is we wanna optimize your social profile. So in my case, I'm primarily using Facebook as my platform, but you might be more active on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, other places. Um, so I'm going to show you on Facebook where, how you can optimize your profile because oftentimes we want to make our profile cute for our friends and family, but we really need to set it up so that when a stranger comes to your profile, they have a really good idea of who you are, what you're about, and they can decide if they want to hire you, connect with you on Facebook, you know, at least connect with you on Facebook, right? So that you get a chance to build that relationship. I'm going to jump in Facebook right now. I'm going to show you how you can optimize your profile, and then we'll come back and talk about the next thing. When it comes to optimizing Facebook, there are five places that you want to double check to have it show up the best way that you can whenever strangers come to your profile. The reason I mention this is because you want to think about who's actually coming to your profile, right? It's people who are either stalking you they or they were referred to you and they're doing their due diligence or they're doing some kind of research or you send them a friend request, they're deciding if they want to connect with you or not. So there's there's a reason that they're on your profile. So we want to set it up in a cool way. So first is your cover photo and your profile photo. So your cover photo, ideally you want it to be something um, recent and relevant. So in my case, right, this is a picture from a trip that we just took. Um, and then on your profile photo, you want it to be just your face with a nice big smile, no sunglasses, right? Um, because if you look at how small, look at like this is on the computer, how big it's coming in. And it's even smaller than that on a phone, right? If we look at, a, you know, look at like how big these pictures are here. So if you look at, you know, those right there, even like even that one is a little bit far away, right? Because, but eventually your brain can remember that that's what Joe's profile photo looks like. But in terms of creating like a face connection, you know, you want it to be like that, right? Where it's just like a nice big photo smile of just your face so that you can try to create some facial recognition with people. All right, next thing is in your intro box. So every, uh, on Facebook and basically every platform has the ability to put a bio. So you want to drop a bio in there. I like doing something where there's like two personal things and a business thing. So in my case, you know, hey, I'm probably in a Nerf battle or Fortnite match if I'm not helping loan officers attract realtors. So you might say, I love riding my bike around Seattle and playing pick pickleball when I'm not helping people with home loans or something like that, right? Um, so something where people get to know you a little bit on a personal level between this intro box and, you know, these photos here. So they kind of already kind of know a little bit about you. Double check in here that you don't have a whole bunch of former uh, places that you used to work at, different biz different mortgage companies and stuff. You can, right here in edit details, you can unselect old mortgage companies you used to work at so that it looks really clean. And then last thing is just looking through your post, um, your last posts, right? So you want to be looking for, um, I like going for a 70-30 split on posts, meaning in a perfect world, and I'm not always perfect either. But in a perfect world, we want to be looking for 70% personal posts, 30% business posts, because, you know, it's just what people are kind of conditioned to accept. And so we want to go along those same lines, right? I don't, I don't necessarily want to get into like all the psychology of the reasoning behind the 70-30 right now, but look through your last posts that you made, look through your last 20 posts, for example, and just do tick marks, which ones are personal, which ones are business and see how you how you line out. If you need to, you know, just start adding more questions and doing more things on the engagement side. So those are the things that you want to be looking for to optimize your Facebook profile. And again, these same tips, they pretty much work across the board for other platforms as well. And so that's how you optimize your Facebook. Idea number two is that you want to be hosting your own events. Look, uh, if you ever look at like P. Diddy, or there's a lot of other examples of people that got really popular and famous off of hosting events and simply being the host. Now, if you're brand new, odds are that you don't really have a lot of realtor relationships or your own network 
of people that you can invite out. So what you can do is we want to leverage that old triangle of trust concept and we want to get other people to talk about your events. Okay, so if you're a loan officer and you're running an event for a realtor, let's just say you're going to teach them something around marketing, we can go get other people that have a realtor audience that would love to be in that room to talk about your events to their network. So what are some examples? Well, like a title person, right? Title reps love realtors, have a huge network of realtors. They can be inviting people for you. An insurance agent or financial planner, a CPA or a divorce attorney, a real estate photographer, a home inspector, right? These are all people that already have a network of realtors and if you can get them to talk about your event, that's how you can fill a room when you don't know anybody yet, is just by reaching out to people that know the people you want to know, right? So it's, it's like the whole, um, it's that old concept like who, not how, right? So instead of going, man, how am I going to fill this room? You go, who can I get to promote my event that will be able to fill this room for me, right? And then that's one of the ways that you can pack a space is by leveraging other people's networks. Idea three that I have for you today is you can go and pitch the idea to realtors to help them run ads and generate leads. See, this is like one of those flip it and reverse it things, you know, is because realtors are usually coming to you as a lender asking for your money. And what we can actually do is we can go and present enough value to a realtor where we get them to pay for the leads. Because most realtors, they don't know how to run Facebook ads. They don't know how to generate leads. It's the reason why people go and pay Zillow and pay Realtor.com like these crazy fees, right? I mean, if you look at the average cost of a lead on Zillow, according to their own reports, $74 a lead. And you, if you can figure out how to generate your own leads on Facebook, you can usually get those for like a dollar to five dollars kind of in that range. And... So you can take that spend from a realtor. If they're willing to pay $74 a lead, you know, that $75 can become a lot more leads on Facebook, you know, like 10, 20, 50 leads. I mean, if things were crazy, 75 leads, you know, sometimes we have ads still in 2024, as crazy as it is, that are generating leads for under a dollar, you know, 68 cents, 74 cents in that range. I mean, it's nuts. So the same thing could happen for you. So if you learn how to run ads, then you can be able to pitch that to realtors like, hey, I'm going to do everything. You just pay for the budget. And, and they love that, right? It's a great value proposition and it gets you free leads and it gets you a relationship with an agent where just by the nature of you doing all that work for them and every time a lead comes in, they see your name and all that, then they're going to be looking for deals for you. you know. And that's how you can kind of take you know, sometimes people say, oh, Facebook ads don't convert. Yeah, I mean, they convert like 1% or 2%, like all other internet leads as a general statement, but they do take work. But it's totally different than a referral, right? But um, that's how you can take these long-term Facebook leads and be able to get business right now where, you know, sometimes we don't even need the Facebook leads to convert because the realtors start looking for deals for, for us. And now they're starting to send you referrals, and now that referral is the first deal you do with a realtor is a referral that they actually sent you just based on the fact of all the effort you've put in to help them generate the leads. It's kind of an interesting idea, but it actually works really well. Idea number four is to attend realtor networking events with, but being extremely purposeful about it, right? So if we know that we're going there, we only have one goal of going to a networking event, which is to meet people and have something occur after that event. Okay, if it's a realtor that you kind of jive with and you like, and you know, if the vibes are good, right? If that's the 2024 word, I think. One second while I have a sip of my strawberry banana prime this week. This stuff is great. I mean, it helps me not drink Mountain Dew and it's super delicious. It's like full flavor Gatorade if you haven't had a prime yet. That's kind of how I compare it. If you have had prime, Drop me in the comments. Let me know. What do you think about it? What's your favorite flavor? I'm kind of curious. I just pick up a new case from Costco when I was in the city the other day. Okay, so if you're going to a networking event, we got to be purposeful about it, right? We want to have openers. We want to be ready to turn that meeting into something different. 
So here's like one idea of a question that you can ask realtors that can create further conversation. So if I'm like, hey, what's up, John? Man, super good to meet you. Hey, just out of curiosity, man, do you have any like old leads in your database that, you know, like old crusty leads that are just sitting in your database that just never did anything? He's going to go, oh my gosh, man, I have tons of those. And you go, hey, I'm just curious, like, would it be like 10 or would it be like a million? What do you, if you had to make a stab, what, how many do you think that is? He's going to be like, oh, at least a thousand, right? And you go, hey, I've actually, you know, got this little thing we've been doing with old, you know, broken leads like that and uh, being able to get them back into conversations and actually sometimes, you know, converting some deals out of the dust you know, would you be opposed if I follow up, you know, if we just chat like after this event tomorrow, we just jump on a Zoom and I'll kind of show you what we're doing and maybe we could do it to that list of a thousand leads you have and try to grab some deals out, the, out of it together. Like, no, nah, man, I'm not opposed to that, right? I mean, you're talking about grabbing free deals out of a database of dust that they already have. So if you're going to go to networking events, you need to be purposeful about how are you introducing yourself? What are you you know, how are you setting yourself up for future meetings, right? So that's just something to consider. A lot of people go there just willy-nilly with no real plan of attack. And so you need to go in with a strategy that's going to lead to one-on-one -on -one appointments after the networking event. All right, last thing, idea number five is we want to be looking for marketing gaps that we can fill for agents. So I'm going to give you the very simplest marketing gap you can help somebody fill and that is to get more Google reviews, okay? So if you go out there and there is a realtor that you've been trying to connect with, go and do some social stalking, right? Go check out their Facebook page. Go check out their Facebook um, personal profile. Go look at their Instagram. See if they're on TikTok. Go see if they have a YouTube channel. Go look at their Google reviews. Go look at all these things, and everybody has gaps in their marketing. I have gaps in my marketing. You have gaps in your marketing. It's just a fact of life of running a business, okay? So realtors also have gaps in their marketing. So if you can come in with an offer to help them fill a gap that you know that they have, it's going to get you an almost all the, all the time certain yes on a one-on-one -on -one meeting, right? And be able to move that into an actual relationship. So as an example, if you go and you see that somebody only has four Google reviews, but you know that they're closing one or two clients a month, those numbers don't add up. And so you can hit them up and just be like, hey man, I was doing a little social stalking. I noticed you only have four reviews on Google right now and you're like way better than a four Google reviews guy. Would you, hey man, I, I've actually got a way that I can help you get another five, seven, 10 reviews in the next week or so. Like, would you be opposed if I come by your office and, and help you with that next week? I'm not opposed to that, right? And then you can either or close them. So you're like, hey, well, let me look at my calendar real quick. Um, would it be better if I come by on Wednesday, like 1130, or would Thursday around 330 be better for you? Right, so now they're picking a time. You get a chance to go over there. So that's just like one example of how you could find a gap in somebody's marketing, and you could be able to have an offer to help them fill that gap, right? So because that's how you're going to get the business is filling gaps in marketing is going to get you shoulder to shoulder, one-on-one -on -one time with a realtor. And we know it takes four hours with a new agent in order to get the business, okay? So that's what it's all about is like how do we move everything from being in group settings, networking events, that type of thing, online relationships into one-on-one, -on -one, in-person, together relationships because that's how you're going to eventually be able to get their business, all right? So these were just a couple of mortgage marketing ideas for beginners that I had that I wanted to share with you guys today. Uh, hopefully those were valuable. If you have other ideas, drop them in the comments. I always love your ideas. If there's a video that you wanted me to talk about or an idea you want me to discuss, let me know in the comments as well And uh, because I always appreciate that um, input on for future content. So again, make sure you smash that subscribe and like button and uh, the bell so you can get notified whenever I drop new videos every Wednesday. And we'll see you back here on the next one. Later.